Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on financial analysis and reporting. In today's video, I'll be discussing how to prepare a cash flow statement with emphasis on the indirect method and its three basic categories such as cash flows from operating activities, from investing activities, and from financing activities. So first and foremost, let's talk about cash. How important is it to have cash? or to have sufficient cash. There's an old saying that cash is king. Cash flow is the lifeblood of the firm. It's like a fuel of a car. So a car needs fuel to run. And just like in any business, cash flow is the lifeblood of the firm and it's the primary ingredient in any financial valuation model. Cash is the most liquid of assets. That's why it is categorized under current assets and the very first item under current assets. Cash offers a company both liquidity and flexibility. A company with enough liquidity can actually do many things. It can take advantage of business opportunities. It can use the cash or money to reinvest in another business, purchase resources or raw materials from its suppliers and take advantage of cash payments and discounts. It can pay its employees on time. It can pay its bills like electricity and rent. It can do anything with its money. Cash is considered both the beginning and the end of a company's operating cycle. In fact, the normal operating cycle of a company begins from the time the company disbursed cash to pay raw materials to its suppliers. And then raw materials will be converted into finished goods and then these finished goods will be sold and the company will collect cash from its customers. So cash is both the beginning and the end. The operating cycle is complete when the collection process returns cash to the company, enabling a new operating cycle to begin. Now, the statement of cash flows reports cash receipts and cash payments by operating financing and investing activities. Take note, only those business transactions or accounting transactions that involve cash receipts and cash disbursements would be reported under your statement of cash flows. Transactions that do not involve any cash outlays or any cash receipts would not be included on your cash flow statement. A cash flow statement reconciles the change in cash on the balance sheet and net income on the income statement. There are actually two methods that we use in the preparation of a cash flow statement. We can either use direct method or indirect method. For the sake of this discussion, we will focus more on the indirect method when preparing a statement of cash flows, considering that it is widely used and it's very simple to do. In fact, in indirect method, we are categorizing our cash flow activities into three, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. When we say operating activities, this would include all cash flows from selling, purchasing, and producing goods, providing services, and paying suppliers, employees, and lenders. To make it simple, okay, all those transactions under your income statement would be included from cost of sales to operating expenses to interest expense down to the tax expense. They would all be part of your operating activities. All right? And then for balance sheet, we will include all the company's current assets and current liabilities except for those financing activities like loans payments, like notes payable, so except for those um, transactions. Now for investing activities, this would include collection of loans receivable, acquiring and selling securities, and acquiring and selling plant assets. As to financing activities, it would include proceeds from the issuance of the company's bonds or stocks, outlays to retire bonds, and the payment of dividends. Here's a complete list of all the cash flows from operating activities, from investing activities, and from financing activities. So in preparing your statement of cash flows, the heading should be first line, the name of the company, second line, the name of the financial statement, such as your statement of cash flows, and for the year ended, December 31, and then the year, just like how you report your income statement. Now, for cash flows from operating activities, 
this would include cash received from customers, cash received as interest income, cash received as dividend income, cash paid for cost of goods sold, cash paid for selling expenses, cash paid for general and administrative expenses, cash paid for interest, including interest on capital leases, cash paid for income taxes, and cash that would have been paid for taxes except for excess tax deduction related to stock-based compensation. So we will tally all the amounts to get the net cash provided by operating activities. Now for cash flows from investing activities, this would include cash received from sale of property, plant, and equipment, cash received from sale of investments, cash received from repayment of note receivables, cash paid to acquire property, plant, and equipment, cash paid to acquire investments, cash paid out as a loan to get the total cash provided by or used by investing activities. And now for cash flows from financing activities, this would include cash received as proceeds from issuance of debt securities, cash received as proceeds from issuance of stocks, cash received as proceeds from reissuance of treasury stock, cash paid to repay debt of principal payment, cash paid on principal related to capital leases, cash paid to reacquire stock or purchase treasury stock, cash paid as dividends to its shareholders, and cash retained due to excess tax deduction related to stock options. And then we will tally all the amounts to get the net cash provided by or used by financing activities. Now, in classifying cash inflows and cash outflows, there are four main points. Number one, Always remember, a decrease in an asset is an inflow of cash, and an increase in the firm's cash balance is an outflow of cash. All of the following on the left side would result to a cash inflow, and all these items would result to a cash outflow. Okay? Any decrease in an asset is a cash inflow. An increase in any liability is a cash inflow. Net profits after taxes is a cash inflow. Depreciation and other non-cash charges is also a cash inflow and sale of stock. Whereas cash outflow is the result when there is an increase in any asset, decrease in any liability, when there are net loss, dividends payment to shareholders, repurchase of stocks, or retirement of stocks. Second point, depreciation is a non-cash charge, an expense that is deducted on the income statement but does not involve an actual outlay of cash. Add depreciation back to net income. So in the preparation of the statement of cash flows, we will add back depreciation expense. Why? Why do we have to add it back? Because depreciation expense decreases the net income of the company. However, it does not involve any cash outlay, okay? That's why we will add it back when we prepare our statement of cash flows. Our third point, only gross rather than net changes in fixed assets appear on the statement of cash flows. We will be presenting fixed assets with its gross amount rather than its net amount, meaning to say we will not deduct accumulated depreciation but simply report it on the statement of cash flows as gross fixed assets. Number four, direct entries of changes in reading earnings are not included on the statement of cash flow. So to better understand how to prepare a cash flow statement, let's have an example. This is Baker Corporation's financial statement, such as income statement and balance sheet. This is from the book of the Principles of Managerial Finance by Lawrence Gitman. So it's given the income statement, so from sales revenue down to the net income of the company, and of course, the balance sheet, the company's assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. So there are two financial statements that we need Okay, when we prepare a cash flow statement. It's the income statement and, of course, the balance sheet. Again, the purpose of cash flow statement is for us to reconcile the change in cash on the balance sheet and of course, the net income reported on the income statement. 
we would like to know what are the transactions that affected our cash and marketable securities. Why did the company posted a net increase of 500,000 in its cash and marketable securities? So our cash flow statement is categorized into three. So let's start first with the cash flows from operating activities. Okay, there are only two items that we will be getting from the income statement. Net profits after taxes and of course, depreciation expense. So net profits after taxes is how much? It's $180,000, all right? And then we will add back depreciation expense. That's the second rule. Depreciation expense of how much? 100,000, all right? And then we're done. We're done with the income statement. Now let's proceed to the balance sheet. Again, we would like to know what are the transactions that affected the net increase of $500,000 in our cash and marketable securities. So we will be getting the difference of all the current assets and current liabilities and, and all those cash flows from operating activities. So let's start first with accounts receivable. What happened? In 2011, the accounts receivable balance of Baker Corporation is 500000 And then in 2012, okay, it decreased to 400000 So we will put it here, decrease in accounts receivable. By how much? From 500 to 400, that's $100,000, right? The question is, is it a cash inflow or a cash outflow? Remember rule number one, a decrease in an asset is an inflow of cash and an increase in an asset is an outflow of cash, right? And since the company was able to collect 100,000, it is a cash inflow, okay? The company has collected cash of 100,000. Okay, now let's proceed to inventories, another current asset. From 900,000, the company posted 600,000 inventories in 2012. So what happened? We have a decrease in inventories by how much 300,000 why did the company post a decrease in its inventories it's because the company was able to sell some of its inventories and if the company sold its inventories that means to say it was able to collect cash from its customers so that is a cash inflow of 300,000 okay next are there any other current assets none so now let's proceed to current liabilities. So we will be including accounts payable and of course accruals, but not notes payable because notes payable will be part of our cash flows from financing activities. So for accounts payable, what happened? From 500,000, it went up to 700,000. So that's an increase in accounts payable of 200,000. When you borrow money, you actually receive money. Okay, so that's a cash inflow. So again, an increase in the liability is an inflow of cash. Okay, next, accruals. What happened? From 200,000, it went down to 100,000. That means the company paid 100,000 of its accrued liabilities. So a decrease in the liability is an outflow of cash of 100,000. Okay, are there any other items on the balance sheet? that are part of the cash flows from operating activities. I think there's no more. We will get the total. So 180,000 plus 100,000 plus 100,000 plus 300,000 plus 200,000 minus 100,000. Now we have a total of 780,000 cash flows from operating activities. Now let's proceed to cash flows from investing activities so what should we include here we will be presenting our fixed assets at its gross rather than at net from 2,200,000 in 2011 baker corporation posted an increase of how much 300,000 the company acquired new fixed assets so in addition to the company's fixed assets that means to say the company um, disbursed cash. So that is a cash outflow. All right. And then we'll also be presenting here any changes in equity investments in other firms. However, there is no given data, okay, as to equity investments of Baker Corporation in other firms. So that's zero. And we will be getting all the cash flows from investing activities. So negative 300,000 plus zero is negative 300,000. This is the total cash flows from investing 
activities. Now we're down to cash flows from financing activities. What should we include here? So definitely, we will be getting the notes payable from 700,000. It went down to 600,000. So decrease in notes payable amounting to how much? 100,000. So the company paid its notes payable. So since the company paid its notes payable, it disbursed cash. Okay, so that's a cash outflow of 100,000. Another, what happened from 400,000, it increased to 600,000. So increase in long-term debt. Is this a cash inflow or outflow? The company acquired more liability. So there's cash. So it's a cash inflow amounting to 200,000. Okay, what else should we include? So we will also be including all the changes in stockholders equity from preferred stock common stocks to paid in capital but according to rule number four all direct entries under your retained earnings would not be included so we will be getting the difference of our preferred stock common stock and paid in capital from 100,000 to 100,000 okay 120,000 and same in 2012 it's also 120,000 and for paid in capital, there are no changes. So basically, there are no changes as to our stockholders' equity. And last but not the least is, of course, we will be including here cash dividend payments. Okay, how much is the cash dividends of Baker Corporation in 2012? How do we compute for it? So first, we get the beginning balance of our retained earnings. How much is the beginning balance of our retained earnings in 2012? It is... 500,000. Remember, the ending balance in 2011 is the beginning balance of reading earnings in 2012. So how much? 500,000. And then we will add net income after taxes. So 500,000 plus 180,000 is 680,000. But what did you notice? The ending balance of reading earnings is 600,000. 680,000 versus that of 600,000, you know that there's a difference of 80,000. And that 80,000 represents cash dividends. Now let's tally negative 100,000 plus 200,000 minus 80,000. We have a total cash flows from financing activities amounting to 20,000. And to get the net increase in cash and marketable securities, okay, the difference between the 2011's amount and that of 2012, it should tally with that. So we should be getting 500,000. So let's tally 780,000 minus 300,000 plus 20,000. What's the answer? That's 500,000. All right. So this is the increase in cash and marketable securities. So basically, a cash flow statement presents all those transactions that affected our cash. For instance, um, how much is the biggest disbursement of the company in 2012? So you can see on the statement of cash flows that it is the acquisition of fixed assets amounting to 300000 This is so far the largest cash disbursements of the company in 2012. Okay, what's the next largest disbursement? Um, the company paid its accrued liabilities and also paid some of its notes payable. The company also paid cash dividends of 80000 So that would explain the decrease in the amount of cash and marketable securities. Okay, what about cash receipts of the company? What was so far the largest cash receipts of the company in 2012? So we can see here that the company able to sell okay, some of its inventories and that um, represents the largest amount of cash received by the company in 2012 the company also posted a net profit of 180,000 and of course it increased its accounts payable by 200,000 it also incurred more long term debts that's why the company posted a net increase in cash and marketable securities amounting to 500,000 so that's it i hope you have learned the very basic and simple way how to prepare a cash flow statement using indirect method. God bless everyone. Have a nice day.